By the end of this video, you're gonna understand how to beat bangers. And the main thing is to beat your enemy, you have to know your enemy. So what is a banger? A banger is a player that hits every shot hard. They wanna hit the first shot hard, the third shot hard, the fifth shot hard, the seventh shot hard, the ninth shot hard, the twenty. <laughs> If a ball rolls on in the middle of a the point, they want to hit that shot hard. All they want to do is, you guessed it, hit the shot hard. Now, over the course of the video, like I said earlier, to beat your enemy, you have to know your enemy. We're going to go into the mind of a banger so we can understand what they're thinking. And then we're going to talk about how do we battle against that and actually get them to one, either stop doing it or two, make them pay. Now, this video is not just for beginners. This video is actually for any player up to the pro level for how they think about playing against hard hitting players. So before we get into anything physical, let's go into the mind for a second. We need to adopt the mindset of if they bang, they pay. And if we can adopt that mindset and not get surprised, we know they're going to hit it hard. So don't get surprised when they do. Expect that. Anticipate that. Now, let's talk about the physical. It all starts with the serve. Often a banger is going to have a really big serve where they want to try to keep you back away from the kitchen. So what do you do for that? Don't be standing right on the white line when they serve. Because if he hits a deep serve, I'm going to have to back up to take that ball and then all my momentum was going backwards before it was going forward. Be one, two to three to maybe four. I mean, just, just be off the line, judge it based on how hard their serve is. So when they do hit a serve, everything you're doing is gonna be forwards toward the kitchen line. That's where it starts. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna return the ball, you wanna hit the ball deep, which is the most important thing, and then run up to the kitchen, right? If you have less mobility, you can hit it with more of a tr like an arc on the ball, which will allow yourself more time to get to the kitchen. And why does this matter? Let's actually break down some math for a second. If I hit a ball from the baseline and they're standing at the kitchen line, it takes this much time for the ball to travel from my paddle to his paddle. If I hit a ball from the mid court in there at the kitchen, it takes this this much time to travel from my paddle to their paddle. If I hit the ball from the midcourt and they're running in at the midcourt, it takes this much time to travel from my paddle to their paddle, but add the extra variable that they're on the move. More on that later. So what's the point of all that? The point is that hitting the ball deep does two things for you. It gives you more time to move up to the kitchen and it gives you more time to react to whatever shot they hit at you. So it matters a lot. And you know what else matters a lot? taking care of your body. I've discovered something that's so good, it's worth being shirtless on YouTube for. Strike the inspirational music. Oh. There it is, cold plunging. Now it's not easy, but either is stopping bangers. If it was easy, everyone would do it, but you're not everyone, you're different. And the music. Now all jokes aside, Arctic cold tubs, this tub right here that I'm in, it's insanely well made. And I use this thing daily, especially after I finish at the courts. You can use it inside or outside. It can be used in the winter. It can be used in the summer heat, especially here in Arizona. It helps get down to 36 degrees. If you want something that in just about two minutes a day can help reduce inflammation, increase blood circulation, improve your sleep, and keep you on the court feeling great so that no matter how many games you play, your body doesn't feel like you just got hit by a car, then getting one of these Arctic tubs will help. I can get you $150 off, go to Arctic tubs.com use code that pickleball guy and if you want bloopers of me trying to make this video in this cold water stick around to the end but right now i'm getting really cold so i gotta get out but like i said to beat your enemy you have to know your enemy so if we understand that they want to rip every ball understanding some math is helpful to understand that we want to give ourselves more time now what's the opposite and what is the thing they want most on our return our second shot they want a short return because they get to get closer to you and make you more fearful number one they might might be able to hit it at you while you're on the move, which we're gonna talk about how to defend later in the video. And like a shark smelling blood in the water, if we got two guys who love to hit the ball, or two girls who love to hit the ball hard, and we can tell that you don't like it, that's blood in the water. We're coming after you. Okay. Do sharks so, smell? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Do they taste it? I don't know. We should look that up. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. <laughs> Let's talk about one other thing that you can do on your second shot, your return, to give yourself a little more margin for error and to handle the hard hitting players that you're, you're playing against. So let's assume for a moment that JT has a bigger third shot drive and he's the more threatening player. I'm threatening too. And let's also assume, because this is often what happens, is JT is on the left side of the court over there. Now, one of the things that I'm going to consider is I'm going to return the ball down the line in JT's backhand. And I'm just going to, when I return it down the line, I'm on the right side. I'm just going to follow my line all my responsibility is, is to cover my line. I want you, come over here. I want you to go like a V formation. So this is the court right here, okay? I want you, I'm gonna come to the line. You're just gonna come in a V. So we're gonna be entering like a V and JT, all you can do is either hit it at me, hit it to you. And if it goes to your left side, it's out. Just let it go. If it goes to the left side. Do you think the audience knows JT can read lips? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Now, so as you saw in that example, Tyler and I are on the same page. We're gonna return it to his back end. Now, he still hit a forehand over there because he just ran around it, which is often what is gonna happen. They're just gonna miss or they're gonna potentially hit a drop if they don't have a backhand drive. So a lot of times what happens is you try to stay only away from that player. And let's say I miss short, which happens all the time. So let's assume that the stronger driver, she's still over there, JT on the left side, but now the serve's coming to the left side player. One area you can hit it is you can hit it down the line and just, you do try to keep it away from this person in that situation. The other thing is often you might not hit as good of a line return as you want. And that really threatening driver, maybe he or she steps across the line again to come rip the ball. If they do that, as you'll notice in this clip, because they came across the split line, they've left an entire space of court open. So do your best to hit the ball to that open space. So again, remember, Remember, to be your enemy, you have to know your enemy. I knew, in this case, JT's the better driver. So I'm gonna develop where I hit the return, who I hit the ball to, in what position, how me and my partner, Tyler, position ourselves based on knowing our enemy. I'm not your enemy, I'm your friend. <laughs> By the way, really quick, quick side note. So Tyler told me that I've never introduced myself in one of my videos. And so let me just take a moment and say, hey everybody, my name is that pickleball guy. My name is Mr. Abignail. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Couldn't keep it together. No, I'm Kyle. Nice to meet you. So remember this, you don't beat bangers by learning how to block better. That's a part of it, but it's not the source of the source. You beat bangers in advance and it starts with that return. After that, and you're going to make some mistakes, then we move on to what we're going to talk about right now, which is your fourth shot, which is how do you actually block the ball in a way that can prevent them from gaining an advantage on you? So when they hit a third shot, what does the banger want your outcome to be? If you said they, the banger wants you to rip it, into the net or miss it into the net or pop the ball up, then you are right. So we're into the mind of them. So if we know that they want us to miss it into the net or pop it up, what do we want to do? Not those things. <laughs> so what's the answer to it? It's two things. Number one, we want to block the ball deep into the court or down at their feet, deep into the court or down at their feet, or try blocking it down in shorts. And what I actually want to do, don't tell Tyler this, he can't read lips. I actually want to bring him in because he hates being up here. So if I want to bring him down. Oh, Jesus. Ah, ah. Right in the nipple. Ah. Now, what's the actual technique or the how for blocking this ball deep and down or short and down? Well, let's watch JT just do a couple reps. Here we go. Okay, so JT, get into a low stance. That's number one, is a low, is a wide stance. And the reason we wanna do this is because I want this guy to be active, right? If you have a really narrow stance, JT, and I try to push this guy over, try to stay balanced, okay? Low balance, not active, that's not an athletic position. If he is here in a wide stance, like this guy's a freaking tank, Let's go. Let's right? Go. So you can be ready to move quickly. Okay? <laughs> the second thing to try is, is actually having a firm wrist. If you have a super, super loose wrist, which is actually what you would do for a shorter return, okay, go ahead and just actually try it. Try having an extremely loose wrist yeah, that's probably what's gonna happen. So that's probably gonna pop up. So JT, instead of a, a loose wrist, try having a really firm wrist. Two things, having a firm wrist and making contact out in front. If you go loose wrist, one, it's probably gonna pop a lot. Now, if you're really good at it, loose wrist will actually dip, it'll just die the ball down, right? But have a more firm wrist and make contact around this area. If you make contact close to your body, right, that's often where pop-ups happen and mistakes happen when people get fearful. So boom, out in front. Wow. Does that feel different? Uh, I'm controlling the block. I feel like a lot of times you come here and open. Yeah, right? now I'm pushing. Versus you're pushing out and down. So, and then the next one is, I want you to hit it firm out in front and down through the ball, okay? okay? Do you adjust your grip at all? If you know yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. On, on grip, if you're holding it Eastern or semi-Western, it's pretty much impossible to get the ball, right? So you might have to adjust your grip to Continental or if it's really, if my thumb's in this position, I want my hand to move over this way so I can yeah. get the ball down. Your paddle tip needs to be, be able to go down at the net. And, and, and you really, you can try it. Like if you try to move your, try to tilt to the other way like yeah, but you can't you can't do it now that could require you to change your grip some in the middle of a point but let's go back now and, and hit the ball down with that grip down wow what, what are you feeling one low out in front and then also slightly rotating my grip so i could push down if i know he's a banger he's gonna hit be hitting a lot of third shot drives i can rotate my grip ahead of hand perfect and then the fifth one is just short compact swings a lot of times we make these really big swings up here and that's what gets us in trouble every action has an equal and opposite reaction so if he's bringing me a bunch of ball with a ton of pace and i then swing big on it it's often gonna fly out so i want short compact swings oh you get it. So what happens when you do miss short? Because we're not going to get a deep return or we're not always going to put it in the right position. So let's see, Tyler hits me the ball and I return it. 
and I hit it short. Now pause. So now, like I said earlier, to beat your enemy, you have to know your enemy. My enemy, if he knows it's a short return, they're gonna come crashing hard, typically at the person moving in. Remember the math and the feet from before? At the person coming in. Because the person on the move now has a more difficult shot. And if I run through it, that's where mistakes happen. Instead, what you'll wanna do and experiment with, when you hit the ball, I'll tell you miss it short, Freeze. If I notice that my opponent is about to make contact or slightly before, stop where you're at by split stepping. So it doesn't mean to stop in a narrow stance. I wanna split step in a wide stance and prepare. And you can only do that if your feet are set. One other thing, as you just saw in that clip, I also, as the person not receiving their return, can help out my partner. So I noticed JT's return is short. To beat the enemy, you have to know the enemy. I know that the enemy, this, these guys, they often, most players do, want to drive the ball towards the middle or cross court. There's just more distance, there's more space, it's a more comfortable swing path. And so knowing that, as you see in this clip, as we show it to you again, I actually slid over towards the middle to cover. Don't just watch your partner have to struggle hitting a mid-court rip at their face. If you know what the enemy typically does, which is hit cross court, step in front, cover them, and help out. Now here's an example of Ben Johns and Natalie Waters. This is an extreme example. He's off the court, and the reason why is they were unwinding the stack. I have a video in the description below about stacking. But the moment that Ben Johns recognized that Annalie Waters hits a short return, notice how he anticipates, moves all the way over to cover her. He didn't just force her to have to hit a really tough shot on the move. And why is that helpful? You want to give your, again, it's about time. You want to give your partner more time to get up to the kitchen and neutralize if they get put into a bad situation. Now, if the possession goes to a fifth or a seventh shot, let's just say when it goes to a fifth shot and they're hitting the ball from the mid court, as you'll notice right here, Tyler's coming in very aggressively looking to rip the crap out of the ball. Tyler's probably hitting that ball out, which he did in this situation. The players you're playing against, if they're charging up, the ball is low and they're only about, say, six, 10, 13 feet from the kitchen and they rip it, it's going to be really hard for them to dip the ball in. So start to develop the habit of getting out of the way and tucking and letting out balls go out. And here's my final thought for you. If you're playing against a banger, somebody that hits every single shot hard, I wouldn't try to reset every ball. It's like a bully coming after you. If a bully's picking on you or they're, they're coming at you and, and hitting you, how do you beat them? Well, you don't just stand back and take it. The psychology of this is, you know, if the shark smells blood, they're coming after you. They smell that you don't like having to handle that pressure and that power and that force, and they, you prefer not to have to do it, they're gonna keep coming. So what do you do instead? Punch them in the mouth. Truth. Just try to bring force back to them. And again, it starts in advance with your return, but bring force back to them and send them a message, even if you miss, saying, no, that's not gonna work. You watch this video. Tell them that. And then tell them to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This video is all about bangers. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm losing my voice. I love pickleball. I hope you get better. Hit me in the comments. JT, let's do this. Hit me a serve as hard as you possibly can, right towards the camera. Go ahead. Hit it with more loft. Just hit it up. If you ever want to say anything, like you ever have a thought, you can turn back to that camera and say something. Cal sucks. No comment. <laughs> Hitting the ball, I don't want him to hear me because I'm going to do this. I hate his secrets. He's plotting against us. I'm going to return the ball down the line JT's backhand. And I'm just going to, when I return it down the line, I'm on the right side. I'm just going to follow my line. All my responsibility is. is to let's, let's act like we're talking. Oh yeah, we got yeah. big plans. Yeah. So let's assume. Try to hit him in the face. Yeah. No, I'm Kyle. Nice to meet you. People run up to me all the time. He just assumes everybody knows him. Not cool. He's that pickleball guy. If you know him, you don't like him. Hey, are you good at geometry? Uh, I used to be. Just give me your paper. Okay. Email it to me, I'll finish it for you. Okay, got it. Wait, I mean, wait, just, I gotta make sure my school doesn't see this. Nope. <laughs> you stay there, okay? All right, really good. Let's go again. <laughs> This is my last video. Yeah. <laughs> not, not doing any more of these. This jet is directly on my body. <laughs> Arctic tug's the thing that you need. You need an Arctic tug. Go get an Arctic tub. That, that took me like five minutes. Arctic cold tubs, $150. <laughs> if you want to watch another video that'll help your game, click right here.